Please don't look at me that way, Sid. Feels like you're looking into a casket. Smile your wonderful smile, my love. Can't really expect me to smile, not now. How could you bring yourself to smile, Aileen, when you know that there's not much time left? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? A question without an answer. I think smiling is a much better alternative to crying my eyes out. I won't need to drink as much tea, either. Aileen, could you ever... ever forgive me? I, I know I've been a neglectful, terrible father. My life has always been unbalanced, always tilting toward work. Why are you apologizing? That's not like you at all, honey. If I... If only I had shouldered the burden of rearing our children together like real parents should, none of this would have ever happened. If only I had been around them more, been around you more. But I never dreamt that my negligence would cause me to lose my wife, my daughter, all because of my work. I ain't any different from that son-of-a-bitch father of mine. Oh, don't say that, Sid. Don't you dare have any regrets for the choices we've made for ourselves, for our children, our family. I want to see the man of ambition I fell in love with. What good is a man of ambition if he can't even save the people important to him? God damn it. Tell me the truth, Sid. Before Rune passed away, did she have some sort of sickness? It's something I've been asking myself to this day. If it's the sickness that robbed me of my daughter, I start wondering what life would have been like if she wasn't sick. I can't say for sure, darling. But the daughter we raised, no matter what defects she has, was our one and only daughter. Sometimes I wonder what life would have been like if I could have saved her from herself in time, if I could have given her the emotions that she was missing. Would she still be the daughter that we knew? Well, nobody knows. I mean, what really happens to a person when they have absolutely no way of expressing their emotions? If emotions are an outlet for all of us to vent and steam our concerns into a bottomless oblivion, does it always stop us from taking one step off the ledge? I don't think I'll ever know. Neither will I. Sid, I have a question that needs an honest answer. Did you hate our daughter? Hate is a pretty strong word. I personally never speak the damn word aloud, but I don't know, my dear. I just feel remorseful and shattered. If I really had to put it into words, I think I might have hated her. I can never reconcile what she did to our family because it's left me broken. I don't think I could ever begrudge the girl for the rest of my days, though. She's left a gap in my heart that can never be filled up again. <laughs> it's your turn to fess up, my dear. In all honesty, I felt nothing at first. Absolutely nothing. But I was in shock. I was numbed from my head to toes because... A rain cloud grew and swelled within my heart. I had so many thoughts running through my mind, but I couldn't utter a single word. I I was a prisoner trapped within the stifling cloud of depression. I felt absolutely nothing, and I wanted so badly to feel something. But with time, that cloud slowly lifted and dispersed, leaving me with a visceral, jolting reminder of the horrible reality I had been returned to. It made me begin to question why I was even alive. The resentment I felt toward myself from that day forward was an incredible force to be reckoned with, because I wanted nothing more than to die. Every waking moment in this pathetic excuse for a body I was born into was sheer suffering. I think I was punishing myself for not being able to save my wretched daughter. I'm a horrible mother, Sid. I've come to accept that, but strangely enough, despite all the suffering I've endured from Rune's cold, callous acts, I don't think I could ever hate her. There was so much I wanted to tell her. There was so much I wanted to ask of her. I wanted to know how she saw things, if life always appeared gray and dull, and what her final thoughts were. I want to beg for her forgiveness, for failing in my duties as a mother, for being blind to her plight, for everything. Oh, wretched, sweet daughter of mine. Could you ever find it in your heart to forgive your failure of a mother? I'll be with you soon, my sweet rune. Stop, stop, Eileen. There's nothing for you to apologize for. You've been a fine mother to our children, and you know it, goddammit. Don't lie for me anymore, Sid. You've done absolutely nothing wrong. You practically raised our children single-handedly. If anyone's to beg for forgiveness, it's my sorry ass. 
I failed my test as a mother by letting my lifelong sickness keep me from my beautiful children. It's all retribution for my failures. I suppose things started falling apart after Rune was placed under house arrest. For years I took such a passive stance and did nothing but hope she'd be reformed. From the bottom of my heart I prayed that our family would be whole again. But somehow, I always knew those prayers would go unanswered. The fissure would never be healed, our family would always remain fractured. Before I knew it, that cloud of doubt started swelling and swelling within me again. I made a decision to keep my concerns unspoken without confronting the reality of it all. I didn't want to be the one to worsen the fracture, not when the illusion of harmony showed me everything that I ever wanted in a family. It would have destroyed us. Nothing made me happier than the status quo, so I suppressed the urge to reveal the truth. And the very existence of the truth is what compelled me to pursue the portrait of my harmonious illusion. The portrait of a happy, perfect, whole family. I was selfish. I was so deluded by a fantasy I completely turned away from reality. None of that matters now, Aline. It's all in the past. You did everything in your power to keep this family from falling apart, and no matter what you say, I will always accept that fact as the one and only truth. But I saw Rune's cross-section. I knew, Sid. Even Rudo tried to force me to face the truth. He told me what Rune did to that poor cat. He warned me she was up to no good again, and I didn't want to believe a single word he said. I brushed my sweet son's words off like they meant nothing. I did what I could to keep living in a lie. And instead, I pushed my responsibilities as a mother onto him. Rudo can watch after her. Yes, why not let the big brother watch after his little sister? I entrusted all of my misguided hopes in Rudo's greatest strength. I let his compassion become Rune's caretaker. And all the while, my son was suffering in silence even more than I was. Suffering from being forced to care for Rune when there was never any hope. And he did it all for me. All for me, Sid, our son. Eileen. Why didn't I believe my boy, my beautiful boy? Sid, promise me you'll never leave Rudo alone. Promise me. He'll never be alone. That I can promise you. Take care of yourself. Look out for Rudo. Leave the laboratory when you can. For our son's sake. I couldn't bear the thought of our son being left to fend for himself without his father. Rudo. Rudo will never know the meaning of loneliness, my dear. I promise you. The very first coherent memory I have was a yearning to escape from solitude. The solitude otherwise known as the Outer Pole, and the frustration from the fact that it was a physically impossible feat to achieve. Frustration. Yes, I could categorize it as such. It didn't sit well with me, that much is for certain. Unfortunately for me, the inability to express this irate emotion was crippling. I often observed people living their bright, monochromatic lives with a purpose day by day. However, I had all the purpose of an empty clamshell. The first time I felt a breach in this barrier when it came to emotional expression was during my childhood, when I saw a bird lying down in a dirt path one day. How it came to be on this path was inconsequential, but its neck was stained in a dull shade of crimson and it appeared to be convulsing severely as if it were struggling to take flight once more. Eventually, this bird stopped its futile struggle altogether. Suddenly, something from within the depths of my chest attempted to emerge as if aroused into a frenzy by the very sight of the carcass. The surrounding onlookers all voiced their pity for the creature, but I voiced the exact opposite. For the first time, I had garnered the most bizarre collection of glances, glares, stares, the sight of the carcass left me with a keen interest, and I hoped to one day witness a similar sight of death. Only in death could I express myself freely. In hindsight, perhaps I also pitied the poor bird. But at the time, I failed to identify what I was feeling, as I could never categorize nor distinguish between the emotions that scenes of death elicited. I began to closely observe the reactions that my actions had solicited and, in time, I became well-versed in the art of mimicking seemingly normal human responses. 
but there was a period of my childhood when I was forced to be confined within my own residence. I had only a few familiar faces to observe then, the faces of my mother and my brother. My mother was always in poor health, but when she spoke, I could always expect a smile in addition to an amplified pitch. Regardless of her poor health, she stood resolute and unwavering in the face of reality. My mother brought what I believed was warmth into my life. At the time, I didn't know how to properly reciprocate her warmth. To me, my mother's unconditional care and compassion felt nothing more than unsolicited, unwarranted, and utterly alien. I didn't seek to fully comprehend a mother's love for her children. And then, there was my brother, Rudo, who spoke with such a soft tone, but would immediately override its effects with his scornful scowl. It was well deserved. For the grand majority of our childhood, I took an active role in traumatizing him. I tried to push him to the edge, time and time again, but he would always rebound and redouble his efforts to work against my own. While my accomplishments garnered much praise in Lab 9, overshadowing everything Rudo has done, he had the audacity to assert his non-existent presence daily. He accomplished what he could with little recognition for his contributions and was constantly subjected to comparisons to our father. He was pressured by his peers to success the ingenuity and innovative mind of Sid Zevitz, which was an insurmountable task in itself for Rudo, but I suppose he never really had a choice in the matter. As the only son and heir to Zevitz Enterprise, Rudo had to scale the cliff toward a realm above our own. Compelled to succeed our father, he made his blind, harrowing ascent upwards in search of the seat of power that he hoped in vain would someday be his to sit upon. While Rudo devoted himself to be his While Rudo devoted himself to his impossible endeavor, I found an indescribable delight at the very thought of chipping away at his footing. Upon reflection, I could have been expressing my envy toward him. Envy at his every attempt to meet and exceed the expectations of his peers. Envy at the very fact that he could openly express himself when my own capabilities were limited to mimicry. Envy at his attempts even now to innovate and invigorate as our father once did. There was nothing I wanted more than to watch Rudo fail in his insurmountable endeavors, because my envy had reached its breaking point. Looking back now, I could honestly admit that I harbored a grievous misconception upon which I based my mimicry of emotion. I learned that emotions could never truly be defined, and that even I was not impervious to manipulation by them. I am responsible for killing my mother, and I am at fault for destroying my father's focus, but most of all, I am responsible for tormenting and warping my brother into the cold, callous man he is today. Father, why did you resurrect me? Why did you imprison me in this shell? Why didn't you leave me to roam free for all eternity? I may never know the answers to these questions, but I suspect this may be penance for my past actions. If I could somehow undo the damage that I inflicted upon so many people in my youth, then perhaps some manifestation of redemption awaits. There were several instances of well-deserved reprimands to be had. There were, without a doubt, some instances that could only be resolved with my death. And when I remember my past deeds and all the pain I've inflicted, I reconciled that I should not have been born at all. What? What in the world am I? Who does this silhouette belong to? Is my father the one who integrated the silhouette directly into my memory, truly Sid Zevitz? Or is it the man whom I had unconsciously sought to destroy all those years ago? Is it my brother, Rudo Zevitz? Whose memories are these? Are they mine, or are they runes? To be in possession of that abhorrent, contemptuous rune Zevitz may very well be a curse. She should not have been born into this world. But were it not for her, I wouldn't exist. My fate is tied to runes. But who am I right now? Am I Sarah? If I'm Sarah, then are these memories somehow temporary additions from Rune? No memories can be shared between two completely different entities, so what does that make Sarah? What am I? Who am I? Am I Sarah? Am I Rune? I have absolutely no clue. But if one thing is for certain, I would desire that Master Rudo be free of the constant torment of my paradoxical existence. If he truly does find my very existence contemptuous, then I would gladly... Would I die for him? 
Would I allow myself to be dismantled and disposed for him? Why am I second-guessing myself? Why can't I commit to a determined action? If only... If only I could have seen Miss Selphine and Miss Ratona once more. If only I could have bid them both farewell. Sarah. Uh, yeah? Your dismantlement will be determined by a collective vote tomorrow. As you have no other tasks to carry out for the remainder of the day, you may return to Laboratory 9. I advise you to go directly there. I've already spoken to Voltha and the others, all of whom are awaiting your arrival. You will do as they command. I understand. Ambassador Rudo, thank you for utilizing my services to the fullest capacity. Sarah, did I not previously forbid you from smiling? I failed to abide by your command. On several occasions, I made an active effort to withhold my emotions. But I have no means to reinforce it, as I lack the privilege of doing so. If you couldn't abide by my command, why did you follow through with it before? How could you bring yourself to abide by my illogical, even preposterous command without a single word of complaint? Because that's what you wanted. It's what you desired of me. Sarah, why are you smiling? Because, Master Rudo, I feel happy. Happy? Yeah, happy. After all these years, when I've done nothing but be a cause of concern, I'll finally be able to give you what you want. And what is that? That I've always wanted? Relief. Because after tomorrow, I'll never have the potential to become Rune. I tried so hard to leave here in an attempt to escape my fate. By impending dismantlement, by impending death. But if I had taken such a selfish approach and disobeyed your commands, you would have shouldered the responsibility for my actions. My services are no longer necessitated, then my continued existence serves no purpose. I've accepted my fate, Master Rudo. If you can feel happiness, do you not feel fear as well? Do you not fear death? I do feel fear. I fear what tomorrow brings. I fear death so much I could just run away at this very moment. But what I fear more than death itself is that my continued existence would only serve to be a source of eternal torment for you. For me? Yeah, Master Rudo, for you. You were always so caring and compassionate. But everything became an afterthought once you were forced to observe Rune's every action. You did it out of concern because you wanted to love your sister so very much. She couldn't understand then, but I'm certain she can now. Sarah, how much do you remember? How many of Rune's memories have you inherited? I don't know. But ever since my activation, the fragments of Rune's memories have slowly regained context. But whether the memories are Rune's, or whether they're mine, I can't really say. Tell me something, Sarah. What in the world are you? I don't know. I wish I could answer that question myself. But, but if one thing's for certain, that can be said aloud. Rudo, I'm just a girl that admires you as my brother. I don't know why. I, I just want... To know what that means. God damn it. Rudo will never know the meaning of loneliness, my dear. I promise you he'll never be alone. Sid Zevitz. Goddamn son of a bitch. Oh. Rune. Rudo did... Did you just call me rude? Is it... Is it okay? Is it okay if I could call you brother again? Call me whatever you want. 
You mean it? Brother, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for everything. Oh my god. I need a minute. I need a minute, guys. Oh god. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, brother. It's all rushing back to me now in a vivid array of formulas that I've seen countless times. A concept that I could never solve as a child. This nostalgic sensation of contractions in my heart that I've longed to express to you. No matter how hard I tried, though, my destructive tendencies oppressed these very emotions that I had struggled to force to the surface. I could never reconcile those feelings. Not while envy and loathing overwhelmed all other sensations. But all along, the solution to solving these seemingly infinite formulas was never as complicated as it seemed. Perhaps it was too simple for my mind to comprehend. But I suppose there's no one single way of defining it, not when it already has so many names. After Rune died, several regrets stacked up in my mind. I wished I never gave birth to her. I wished I never moved to Cadia. That I never applied to work at Zevit's Enterprise. I wished I never met you and that I just stayed in my hometown and succeeded my family's business. Most of all, I wished I had never fallen in love with your ambition. Those were the sort of regrets that overwhelmed my mind. But truth be told, I wouldn't have done it any differently. I would have never known the joy of loving you, of becoming a mother and raising our children. I wouldn't have traded any of these experiences for a second chance. I love you all too much to give any of that up, but just thinking about it brings me to tears. I couldn't even think about living a life without my dear daughter. Regardless of what she did to me, I still would have chosen to bring my one and only daughter into this world. Aline. There was never a dull moment in my life. From the moment I met you, said Zevitz. Nothing made me feel more fulfilled than becoming your wife, becoming a mother, giving birth to Rudo. And even though the world as we know it may never forgive her for everything she's done, I was glad to have given birth to Rune. I'm glad she was able to experience life for as long as she did. Eileen. I... I love you, said Zevitz. Thank you for everything. Eileen. Take care of yourself and Rudo for me. <laughs> <laughs> 